before you intend to walk, run, jump, lift weights, do whatever you're going to do, your brain is constantly figuring out where you are located in space. What is your orientation? And it does this through three primary senses, your visual system, your auditory system, and your tactile system, really the ground underneath your feet, so your feet on the ground. Now, remember, this is not, because humans are asymmetrical, it's not even on both sides. Your visual system, your auditory system, and your physical body are not symmetrical, which produces a very normal asymmetry of a body and human brain and body that like to be over on the right side more than the left side. That's not a problem. But when we become so right-sided that we lose our left side, we lose our ability to get our pelvis to the left, this is called the left AIC pattern in post restoration. When we lose the ability to get to the left, over and we stay there for over time, we just can't alternate sides, we start to lose stability in our body and we'll often start to have to increase our use of other systems like the visual system or the auditory system uh, to make up for that lack of ground sense. And that can become a major problem. So you're gonna see two videos uh, towards the end, one where I'm showing how the support surface that I'm standing on, whether I'm on solid ground or solid flat floor or foam, uh, influences how I use my visual system and my auditory system. You're gonna see through uh, my standing toe touch. I can either touch my toes or I can't. And you will also see another young lady who is stuck in a pattern. Her pelvis is forward on both sides. She's an anterior pelvic tilt on both sides, meaning her hip flexors are overactive. And that goes away the moment she hears, she listens to her own heels hitting the ground, and she acknowledges that they do not sound the same. The vast majority of people will support their left side instability just by over relying on the right side. That's like 80% of people that come to see me. Uh, a large, another proportion, another portion will start to use their jaw and their teeth. They'll start to create cross bites, open bites. They'll start to, they won't know that they're doing this, obviously. This is an un- this is a, an unconscious behavior that starts to occur. They'll start to overuse their neck for everything, and that can start to shift the jaw. Uh, but then the smaller minority may start to use their visual system uh, and also perhaps the auditory system, which is not well, was not much discussed even inside posture restoration. Now, all the information I'm talking about in this video is fully supported by research. I have three uh, research papers here. One is called The Rhythm of Perception. And it's just saying acoustic rhythmic entrainment induces subsequent perceptual oscillation. Don't worry, worry about the title. But acoustic rhythms are pervasive in speech, music, and environmental sounds. Our brain is constantly making sense of periodic and non-periodic stimuli in the form of rhythms. Another, the significance of right ear auditory processing to balance. I'm going to show a video to show you what I'm talking about. And then the other one is the effect of foam surface properties on postural stability assessment while standing. So you're going to see how when I'm standing on foam, how my, 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 my straight leg toe touch changes. My tension changes depending on what surface I'm on, whether it's a flat floor or, as I'm barefoot, flat floor or foam, and whether I'm using my visual system, whether the visual system is completely blocked out, uh, and what I'm listening to in terms of uh, speech patterns, in terms of, of frequencies of speech. If this is your first time seeing one of my videos, I am a Posture Restoration Institute credential provider in Chatham, New Jersey. That's where I do my in-person sessions. I also do some online consulting. Uh, all that information can be found on my website and the links are in the description. This entire channel is about human asymmetry, movement, and the science of Posture Restoration. So when we lose sense of the ground underneath us, and remember someone in this left AIC pattern has lost the ground to one degree or another, particularly underneath the arch of the right foot and the heel of the left foot, so they can't shift back to their left side, uh, you have to call in one of the other two uh, sensory modalities because you lost the tactile sense from the ground, or the ground sense, tactile sense from underneath your feet. And in general, that's gonna be the visual system. So in this study, it's, uh, it's called the effect of foam surface properties on postural stability assessment while standing. They'll often use foam to put it under people's feet because that takes, away the, the, that takes away the ability for the brain to get normal pressure from the ground underneath their feet. So it's, it's seeing how they react when the ground is pretty much taken away from them. And basically what happens, they say, is vision is known to help maintain postural stability, especially when other sensory systems are compromised. Imbalances caused by compliant surfaces, like foam, 
can be quickly detected and prevented when the eyes are open. Hence, the stabilizing effect of vision uh, is more important when the subject's stability was increasingly challenged by the support surface. So when people lose the ground underneath their feet because they're stuck on one side and their brain is never really understanding heel, arch, big toe, they've lost the ground. They're, especially on the left side, they're never getting over to their left side. So that's a threat. That's, that causes instability through the pelvis, particularly through the left, uh, the left hip. So what will often happen is people will start to overuse their visual system, just like the study says, to help stabilize them, particularly when they're in single limb stance. So when they're on one foot and the other, arm, the other leg is swinging through the air, that's where it's found that vision really comes into play uh, to stabilize them, which is fine if it's momentary. But the problem is because, be because people become unstable over prolonged periods of time, they can learn to use their vision and now that to stabilize them. And then now that gets in the way of regrounding because they've learned to overuse their eyes. And the eyes are so strong that once you're overusing your eyes, you, it's, it's a struggle to get the ground back underneath your feet. So once you lose heel, arch, big toe, which is a normal supination, pronation, resupination, you know, that's how the foot is supposed to move you forward. When you lose the ground because you're stuck on one side and thus you're never really going through heel, arch, big toe cycle, which happens a lot with minimalist shoes because again, there's nothing to touch the arch and there's nothing to stabilize the heel. Uh, when that happens, you've lost a rhythm that your brain picks up on. Now, I know it's important because if I play a waltz to someone who doesn't have heel, arch, big toe, if I play three, four timing a waltz, which is basically heel, arch, big toe, it works perfectly, they can relax, They're, they'll pass their tests. But sometimes if their feet, if they need orthotics, the moment their feet come in contact with the surface, they tighten up again. They go right back into the pattern. So it's a rhythm. Heel, arch, big toe is a rhythm. It's a sequence of events that your brain picks up on. That's timing. Timing doesn't exist to the brain. In terms of the clock time, the calendar time, that does not exist to the brain. That only exists to the conscious human who agrees upon the fact that we're using a particular calendar and this clock means what it means. But if you're using a different calendar, like the, I don't know, one of the old ancient calendars, uh, the year would not be 2025. It might be the year 4,000 something. So time doesn't exist. What is time to the brain? It's a sequence of events. It's a rhythm, heel, arch, big toe. That is a timing event, a sequence of events. Once you lose it, your brain loses sense of where you are and you tighten up. So when you watch this video, uh, you got to realize for me, this was a huge issue. And I'm only starting to talk about it now because I had to get it worked out in my own mind what was actually happening. I knew language and music was, could either tighten me up or completely relax me. Uh, but it was confusing. This has taken like three years of intense research for me to figure this out. But you're going to see this video. Uh, you're going to see how my support surface, what I put underneath my feet and what I'm listening to and how I, whether I have visual input will actually, you'll see it uh, tighten me up because I can touch my toes or I can't touch my toes. When I can't touch my toes, obviously I got tense. And if you get tense, you go over to your right side. So it's not just that uh, I'm, I can't touch my toes, that, in, that indicates that my brain is saying, there's a threat here, so let's go back to the right dominant side. So keep that in mind. My brain, for some reason, I didn't have the ground, I'm pretty sure, from a very early age. I have very high arches. My head was in a torqued position from a very, you know, as a, as a young child. So I don't think I ever had the ground. So I think my brain, so that rhythm was never instated. So I think my brain started to pick up on speech rhythms to, for orientation. And that's what you're gonna see in this video. I forgot to mention, when you see me plug my left ear, so only my right ear is, uh, is there. I'm doing that on purpose because I believe that I learned inappropriately to you inappropriately to use my left ear for orientation or to pick up those rhythms. But here's a study called The Significance of Right Ear Auditory Processing to Balance. Uh, the results indicate that the right ear contributes more to balance than the left ear. So if for some reason you learn to use your left ear to listen to certain frequencies or, or language, uh, that could be a problem. Uh, and the study also says studies show that auditory information can be integrated with vestibular, which is you know, inner ear, uh, somatosensory, tactile input from you know, when surfaces touch you, like the ground underneath your feet, and visual signals, 
to improve balance, orientation, and gait. That's what we're talking about with post restoration. People are in pain because they've lost the alternating sense of balance, orientation, and gait. They're stuck over on one side. So if you don't have your vision, if you don't have the plantar surfaces, the surfaces underneath your feet being sensed properly because you have the wrong shoes, the wrong shoes for your brain right now, or maybe you, you've lost some hearing, or maybe for some reason like me, you learned to use your left ear and it's interfering with how your brain is, is integrating all these frequencies because that's what they all are. Uh, you can have, you can get tense and now you keep getting stuck. And it's hard to sometimes figure out why is this brain of this person not, why does it keep tensing them up? Well, in my case, it was definitely auditory frequencies. So for the past few years, I've had back pain, not back pain, back tension in the morning. I can't even come close to touching my toes. And now I realized all I got to do is step on foam and uh, well, I can touch my toes. So you're going to see the difference. Uh, so here's my baseline, uh, fl uh, flat floor, bare feet in the morning, cannot touch my, that's actually pretty good compared to an hour ago when I woke up. And then when I'm on foam, immediately I can already touch my toes. So that's my baseline. When I wake up in the morning, and my bare feet are on the flat floor, uh, my back gets really, really tight. It's probably as my brain is adjusting to a flat surface after lying down. I know there's nothing wrong with me. It's just my back gets tight over the course of the morning, it gets loose. Uh, but I realized if I just stand on foam, my back loosens up immediately. So I change the support surface and that's the difference. So again, flat surfaces are threatening. When, I, when that flat surface, my arches do not touch do not touch the floor because I have high arches. When I stand on the foam, the foam, I can feel the foam come up underneath my arches. So it gives my brain a sense of stability and my back relaxes. So that's the baseline. Now you're going to see me do a couple different scenarios where I start to turn on speech because I realized it was speech, English language actually, uh, that really tend to kind of tighten my back out of, for no reason. Uh, well, I thought it was no reason. So you're going to see me standing on foam. And you're going to see how my toe touch, how my tensions level change, depending on what sensory input I'm manipulating. So it, you'll just have to see it. And uh, eventually you'll see me resolve it, which is kind of cool. So here I am. I'm listening to a woman's voice, English. I'm on the phone. I could just touch my toes before. And now I cannot. Now I block out all the light to block out my vision. And obviously I'm very unstable and it gets worse. <laughs> All right, so blocking out my vision did not help, obviously. Now all I'm doing is blocking, I'm plugging my left ear so my right ear is exposed. And I can get much lower. And then I put the sleep mask on, I block out all the light. I only have my right ear and the foam underneath me and I can touch my toes, no problem, completely relaxed. So, and I'm, I'm even, even with the mask on, I'm still completely relaxed. So, different support surfaces, the shoes that you wear on your feet, uh, will, once you lose the ground, the, 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 the crux of the issue is this, once you lose the ground, what does your brain have to do to uh, to, to restabilize or to stabilize your body or to find a rhythm that you lost. You, you don't have that heel arch big toe rhythm anymore. So maybe your brain will start to entrain with auditory rhythms, whether it's music or speech. My guess is speech would be more, more common. However, because it's so available, it's constantly with us. People are always speaking. So, and our brain is looking to communicate. Remember, we have intrinsic brain activity that is, that is looking, that is trying to connect with the outside world. Uh, and when something falls within those frequency ranges, the brain connects to it. It's pretty fascinating stuff, but that's the crux of the issue. Most people will simply over rely on their right side. They'll just keep over to move, to use their left side. They're still going to use the right side. That's the vast majority of cases. But for some people, it will move up those compensations. Those, uh, those that need to establish stability somewhere can move into the, the, the oral cavity, crossbite jaws will start to shift. People will start to hyper-focus their eyes. Uh, they start to stare, uh, they, their prescriptions might start to change, they might start to rely on one eye more than the other. 
Uh, so our feet make a rhythm as we walk forward. It's called heel, arch, big toe. Uh, and you're going to see how heel strike on the right and heel strike on the left will not sound the same. I mean, they should not sound the same because your right side is heavier. So the right side is more like a downbeat and the left side is more like an upbeat. And you're going to see how someone's posture restoration tests change. All this range of motion appears to them uh, simply by having, having her listen to her own feet. Because again, our bodies and our brains are inherently musical. You just have to tap into that to start to improve people's ranges of motion because their nervous system relaxes because they find themselves again. So here is the testing. This young lady, her, her right leg will not go down and then her left leg will not go down. So her pelvis is forward on both sides. She has an anterior pelvic tilt on both sides. Now I just have her walk. I feel like my right foot does like a slightly higher pitch. Slightly so higher. it sounds like also like a little louder. So, okay. yeah, I don't know if it sounds louder because like it is actually louder or because mm -hmm. like the pitch is slightly. Okay, okay. do it a couple more times. So I just have her walk. She's listening to her feet. And now her right leg adducts and her left leg will then adduct as well. You'll see. And there it is. She no longer has an anterior pelvic tilt simply by listening to her own heels. It's called echolation. It's like sonar. All right? Your brain knows as it, hit, as it hears this rhythm of heel strike on the right, heel strike on the left, it relaxes. She, I didn't change anything in terms of she walked in <laughs> And she wasn't neutral. And then I just got her neutral in her pelvis simply through hearing her hear, having her hear her own heel strikes. So that's the auditory component. Uh, your brain has to make sense of where you are. And it seems like uh, your brain, one of the ways your brain may, will make sense of where you are in space, uh, because it doesn't know, it has to constantly figure this out, is through the sound of your own body. And of course, the sound of your own voice is a huge one, but I'm not talking about that today. Now, I knew that was going to work because I've done it many, many times with people. The straight leg raise test I was more intrigued by because, you know, people will stretch their, their hamstrings for years and years and years to try to get 20 to 30 degrees of straight leg raise. Watch how her left leg straight leg raise, which was a slightly, you'll see, watch how it changes. Okay, so before, it's already tight and it got maybe to 70 degrees. And then after, it goes all the way to 90, no problem. She just gained... 20, 25 degrees of straight leg raise. Simply, we did nothing else. Simply through hearing her own heels. When your brain can understand where you are in space, uh, the body relaxes. So a lot of people, their brain can no longer sense where they are in space. They're stuck on one side. Uh, if I did that with someone, now she, the good thing about her was she was not unstable in any real sense. Her, her, her hips were still, um, they're not pathologic in the sense that they didn't have extra range of motion. She was limited, but she, she had all the normal ranges of motion. She wasn't excessively, uh, she wasn't unstable, let's just put it that way. She was just in a pattern. So, that, so for someone who's very, very unstable, would it work? Would, the, would those tests change? It would definitely, they would probably change for the adduction test. Uh, so the legs would go down. For the straight leg raise, probably not. So it's not, gonna, it's not like every single person is gonna re going to um, respond the exact same way because people have different situations. People have different amounts of instability inside them. They have different amounts of neck breathing going on. They, some people don't wear their glasses and they're supposed to. Uh, some people have jaw and teeth issues. So I knew she didn't have any of those issues. So I knew that I knew her legs would drop. I was very surprised by the straight leg raise increase, but uh, it was cool nonetheless. Uh, and even in, within posture restoration, frequencies are not really, or auditory frequencies are not really talked about. So is this normal part of posture restoration? It is, but it's not, well, I would have to say no at this point. This is me. You're not going to find this anybody anywhere else. Uh, even within posture restoration, no other PRI therapists are doing this. This is me. Okay, because this is my obsession <laughs> and I've been researching this to death for the past three years. So, uh, so it is posture restoration because we know the brain can, will link up, it will use other things to stabilize you. But in terms of the auditory component, this is all my work. You're not going to find it anywhere else. So, uh, so just if you see a PRI provider, don't expect that they're going to be looking for this because this is just something that I do because of my own personal experiences 
and my own obsessions with with uh, rhythm and, and, and dancing.